If you're looking for the best two vampires, a list you must see. We made this list based on our personal preference and sorted it based on their features, prices, quality, durability, and reputation of the manufacturers and customer feedback. Also, we've included options for every type of customer. So let's get started. At the first position of our list, we have Positive Grid Spark 40. Where to start with the Spark 40? Well, it just stops short of cooking your dinner, but it has most other essential functions covered and a few more besides. Its core centers around Positive Grid's bias tone engine modeling tech, which allows it to put together a formidable collection of amp models and cover all bases tone-wise. Altogether are 30 amp models to choose from and 40 effects so it's punching big numbers already in the context of desktop amp functionality. But with the accompanying app, the Spark offers a transformative experience. It may well change how you think about guitar amplification. The Spark Smart Jam feature allows you to play some chords or a riff, and the amp will generate a backing track for you to play to. Who needs friends? AutoCord allows you to stream music from your mobile device to the Spark, and it will transpose the chords so you can play along. As a learning and practice tool, it doesn't get much better. There are outputs for recording in silent practice. Sure, it's 100% digital, but it feels analog, and crucially it sounds great low volumes. When you crank the spark, its dual four speaker setup fills the room with a sound that has no right to be so three-dimensional. Early adopters of the spark have experienced some shipping delays, but things appear to be improving rapidly. Moving on to the next at number two with Yamaha THR30 Roman II Wireless. Yamaha's THR series remains groundbreaking. It looked to dress the guitar amplifier and home audio stylings, pack it with digital functionality that, crucially, was rooted in the feel and responsive valve amplifiers and make it portable. Well, amps don't get much more portable than the THR30 Roman II Wireless. It can be operated via the 15V DC power supply, or alternatively, Charge it up and take it out with you to enjoy 15 watts of stereo solid state power in the park, by the beach, on top of a skyscraper a la Adwo. Whatever you like, it is bundled with Cubase AI, has a very respectable complement of all more effects, and with headphones and USB outputs it is a sound option for home recording and late night practice sessions. It also looks so good you could leave it in the living room without getting a ticking off. The number three position is held by Blackster Silverline Deluxe Ed. When Blackstar launched its Silverline series, it was as though digital modeling amplifiers had grown up, bought their first suit, and got a real job. The B word was invoked, and with good reason, because the gray silver on gray designs, the feature set, the seriousness, make everyone stop for a minute and consider their options. With the Silverline, there are many. If you like the idea of the Silverline, but are looking for a head, the range also includes the 20W Standard once and the 50W Special once 12 the 100W Deluxe 112, and the Tuxo 100W Stereo Deluxe Tux 12 combos. The setup and look on each is similar, with Blackstar's SHR processing tech under the hood to keep the tones legit. There are effects, programmable settings, and TVP tech allowing you to select the power tube emulation you prefer. They look and sound like real valve amps, but have all the mod cons that tomorrow's player needs today. Credible, convincing, state of the art. Next at number four, we have Blackstar HD20R MK Roman II. Offering plenty of change from a grand, Blackstar's HR20R MK Roman II is a mid price valve combo that does a very good impression of an amp retailing at two or three times the price. It is a two channel amp with foot switchable overdrive voicings and an uncanny ability to play the field tonally. The clean channel is a simple affair with a solitary tone control and a volume with modes for scoop US tone, think Fender et al, and a quintessentially British mode with tight mids and treble chime. You could get lost in the cleans, adding a splash of a worked digital reverb that now sounds studio quality. But don't forget you've got an overdrive channel with classic and high gain voicings that will take you from classic 70s rock crunch through to contemporary metal. And all this from one package. It's loud enough for the stage, but you can power down to two watts for bedroom shredding. It's a remarkable feat of amp build. Number five position is held by Blue Guitar Amp on Mercury Edition. Like the best innovations in guitar technology, the Thomas Bluggs Amp on keeps all the clever stuff hidden from sight, allowing players to concentrate on what is frankly difficult enough, playing the guitar. But the Amp on really is clever. It's the size of a multi-delay unit. You can throw it in a bag and take it wherever, and yet offers you four channels 
100W of Class D power, with some analog mojo fairy dust by way of a sub-miniature Russian twin tribe. Simply select which channel you want, clean, vintage, classic, modern, and dial in your tone via the three band EQ and volume, master, and gain controls. It's just like a real amp. And that's the point, it is. This is the shape of amps to come. Partner it with the remote on foot switch you can access all four channels, boost and reverb via MIDI. Plus add an ancillary master volume and adjustable power soak. You can save your settings down and use them as you might in a pedal board. This is a futuristic amp for those squeamish about apps, software and digital sterility. The number six position is dominated by Victory V4, the Duchess pedal amp. The Duchess pedal amp assumes a similar form to Victory's V4 series of pedal preamps, but it's a fully functioning amplifier with a whopping Class D power stage that delivers 180 watts at four ohms and a truly lush valve-driven preamp that makes damn sure you don't mistake this as just some kind of practical option for the gigging musician. Sure, it is practical, but it is the tones that will have the hair on the back of your neck standing to attention. Specifically, clean tones, and with a boutique low gain tone profile like that, it should come as no surprise that the Duchess just loves overdrive pedals. The enclosure is super tough, powder-coated steel, with its complement of chicken head knobs protected by raised steel kick bar. A single foot switch turns the tremolo on and off. For itinerant players, this could be the ultimate amp. Moving on to the next at number seven with Fender 68 Princeton Reverb. The Fender Princeton Reverb has long been considered the Goldilocks option for those looking for an all-valve combo with manageable volume. But one that's loud enough for small shows. There's a reasonable amount of headroom on offer with its bell-like leans mother's milk to blues and country players. And as you crank up the volume, you'll find a gritty breakup that's warm, musical, and addictive. This 68 reissue comes with a silver panel and aluminum grill cloth trim. Under the hood, it has been tweaked by Fender, so it will take pedals better, with negative feedback reduced to enhance its response and bring on overdrive that little bit quicker. Under the hood, you'll find hand-wired valve sockets and custom-made Schumacher transformers. The tube-driven reverb and tremolo is divine. The number eight position is held by Vox's C15C2. The new issue C15 twin retains the all-important dual e 4 cathode-biased output section of its forebear. But otherwise, it's very different. A quick scan across the top panel reveals two inputs for independent access to either normal or top boost channels. One benefit of the bigger tube 12 enclosure is that it provides ample room for a full-length reverb tank housed in the bottom. There's also an inbuilt tremolo effect with controls for depth and speed. But the whole point of this amp is the pair of 25 watt Celestion G12 M Greenback speakers. They are the speaker of rock in so many cases, and while purists might hope for Celestion Blues, they would add a fair amount to the price, and the increased power handling of two Greenbacks on the end of just 15 watts is quite a tantalizing prospect. It's fair to say that even with the master volume setup, the magic doesn't really start happening until the amp's lungs are at least halfway open, but happily. That's not far from perfect for many of today's pub and bar gigs. It may even be too much for some. Next at number nine, we have Fender Tone Master Deluxe Reverb. The Tone Master series has been the center of an interesting turn of events for Fender. Reissuing their iconic deluxe and twin reverbs was only ever going to be a welcome move. But, and some of you may need to sit down for this, taking out the valves has definitely split opinion. But hey, Dry your eyes, champ, because this deluxe sounds just as good as any Valve i5 version. Relying on its massive digital processing power to emulate the tone of an all-valve deluxe, it absolutely holds its own. The sparkle and clarity we've come to expect from Fender amps is all there, thanks in part to the 12 Jensen and 12K speaker AMD the resonant same as the original Pine cabinet, as the Tone Master is designed to replicate Valve as breakup response. Fender has also included an inbuilt attenuator for those times when you need to bring it down a notch. The rear panel also contains a balance, line out with cab simulations, making this deluxe great for silent recording or smaller gigs where making amps is impossible. Oh, and it's half the weight of its all-valve predecessor. Fender has nailed it here, if we do say so ourselves. Finally, the number 10 position is dominated by Roland JC120. Since its release in 1975, the JC120 has been on countless era-defining records. Andy Summers, Johnny Marr, and Robert Smith have all been religious users of the jazz chorus line, in turn making it one of the most iconic solid-state options of the last 45 years. 
The JC120 is named so due to the lush onboard stereo chorus effect that has made it so desirable. This is down to the fact that the JC120 essentially is two 62 amps inside of it, one for each speaker allowing for true stereo rather than an approximation. In true stereo, the JC120's immersive chorus provides an almost otherworldly playing experience. It's an ideal pedal platform, too, with transparency and preservation of tone being key features of the JC120. You'll have no problems crafting your tone with additional pedals or other hardware. If you like to use overdrive or distortion, a pedal is almost a necessity with this amp, but you're not buying an amp with jazz in the name for its current inducing gain, are you? That's all for today. We upload product review videos every single day. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for the upcoming video notification.